All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and apply the vinyl, the uh, honeycomb pattern uh, that you see here. It's all weeded out. Actually, this is one that I cut a couple weeks ago uh, when I did the first controller. But uh, in order to get this lined up properly, what I want to do is put the controller sort of back together. I'm going to take some eighth inch fine line tape right here. Just tear off a long strip. And you may be asking yourself, dude, why are you wearing gloves? Um, I don't want any contaminants transferring to the controller and leaving fingerprints that will show up later in the paint job or during the uh, clear coating process. So that's why I'm wearing the gloves. So I'm just going to put the two halves together as if it was going back together. And I'm going to take my tape. And I'm just going to tape this thing up, make sure I'm staying in frame, tape it up, and now when I apply my vinyl mask on this side right here, um, it will be applied as one piece, and then I can cut it and separate the controller again. The trick is getting the vinyl off while you're wearing gloves and not having the vinyl stick too much to your gloves. So just look for some sort of positioning that kind of looks decent. What I want is for this uh, sealer to show through. That's going to give my honeycomb pattern. I don't think I'm going to use any pearls on this one. Uh, normally with vinyl mask, yes, I would use some transfer tape, but uh, with that pattern, it's really, uh, really not necessary. So now I'm just going to cut right in this groove right here. Cut my mask. I can now remove my tape and if I prepped it properly which I did my sealer will not pull up Just tape ball that up I can separate the controller make sure the vinyl is sticking well to the controller can hang that back up on the board. And now, I do believe we are ready for color. Alright, so now for the color. Again, using my Vega 2000. Also going to be using uh, Auto Air Transparent Flame Red. Not using any reduction on this, so got the pressure kicked up to about 50 psi. And I'm going in since this is a transparent, really, really light. And I know I'm going to have to use five, six, maybe seven layers to get the color that I want on here because I am using a transparent. But that's okay. I want that extra control.
All right, so we're nearing the end. Sorry, I skipped a lot of that for you, but you know what? It's really freaking boring anyway. Sit here and watch me spray a base coat collar. But you know, I really do. This is the first time I'm using this transparent red over this uh, sealer gray mixture that I came up with. And I really like it. Especially in the contours. It's like in here, you know, when you look at it, it, it has some really dark undertones to it, and I really like that. So, I'm uh, going to let this uh, dry and cure. Maybe not cure, but dry anyway. And then, um, peel off the mask. I'll show you guys what that looks like. And then, that mask, that, that, that honeycomb mask, I'm done with. Uh, but I'll be using the other, the Robin mask on the front face of the controller. That's this one here I cut earlier. So, stand by for that. Alright, so I had in fully intended on showing you guys the application process of this uh, vinyl mask, but you know, uh, it really turned out to be a pain. And, uh, you wouldn't have been able to see much. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just making sure that everything that I need masked is masked. I notice one little spot over here that's coming up. Another little spot over here that's not quite lined up. That looks good. And that little flap keep, wants to keep coming up, so I'm just going to tape it down. So, yeah, uh, this was quite a pain. This this logo is quite detailed. I should have gone in with the, the plotter software and uh, clean this up but there's the logo just the R as it's gonna look the gray parts you're seeing right there are, are gonna be red and the white parts you're seeing the white R is gonna be yellow uh, for this controller but uh, yeah I didn't really think about that when when I was tracing the image But not a big deal. It's all on there now. And what I have mixed up in my Devilbus dagger, I have a, a yellow, uh, what is it, the Wicked, uh, just regular Wicked yellow. 0003 from Wicked. Uh, I've added to that some white to just make this a little more opaque, just to aid in opacity. And I'm going to come over this quite light. A lot lighter than I was spraying the red. The yellow looks really pale, but for now I'll take it. I really wanted that uh, that white in there to make this very opaque.
because I don't want my yellow going orange over top of the red. Alright, so there looks pretty good. I'm going to do a quick color change here. Off camera, I know. Sorry. But all I'm going to do is grab some uh, transparent yellow. It's all the way back in the shelf. It's bubbling up the color cup now just to rinse it out. I'm just using reducer for this color change. No special cleaners or anything like that. I'm grabbing some Auto Air Transparent Yellow 4231. Got about three drops in there. I'm going to add two drops of reducer. I'm going to mix that up, bubble it up in the cup. And now I can take and shift this yellow, this very pale yellow that I have. I can shift it to the color that I want. I think that's about it, honestly. I think my dagger needs cleaned. In fact, I know my dagger needs cleaned. Maybe just bump up that saturation a little bit more. There we go. Give this a second to dry and I will unmask it and show you guys what it looks like. So there's what it looks like after the masking was removed. You can see in here I did have some problems with overspray, but you know what? I'm not worried about it. It's an easy fix. Um, that's the Robin logo they wanted. There's the top. Let's go to the honeycomb. There's a honeycomb side. I'm actually thinking about using some of that transparent yellow and shifting that honeycomb to orange just a little bit. So there we go. You guys will see that in the finished product whether or not I do that. <laughs> so there's what it looks like as of now. Alright, so here's a controller after clear coat. It's been out here for a couple hours uh, just curing. There's our hunting comb pattern. And this clear guy is straight out of the gun. It's not uh, it's not even cured enough yet to be able to, to even think about sanding it. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't think I will. But there we go. There's how I painted this controller. I also went ahead and sanded back the uh, Batman case and re-cleared that. 
So that's all, all nice. That's all curing. It's got some pearls in there that you really can't see uh, on camera. I'd need to get it out in direct sun, but uh, it's got some really cool pearls in there as well. So there we go. Thanks again for watching. Sorry it took, sorry the video ran so long, but you know, uh, that's really the whole paint process in a nutshell on what I do to airbrush controllers. Uh, I wish I could have showed you the clear coat process, but you know that stuff gets everywhere, and uh, I didn't want it getting in and and uh, messing with my my uh, iPhone, my camera. So there we go. Thanks again for watching, I, guys. Again, I'm Sergeant M. I'll catch you next time. Yeah.